medcram.com. Welcome to another MedCram video. We're going to talk about avian flu or H5N1. This is the epidemic that is affecting not only poultry, but also dairy cows. What is happening? Is it increasing or is it decelerating? And unfortunately, it is actually increasing. And we're going to do an update today on exactly what's going on and where we're going with this. So it is circulating in avians, so birds, but it's also being found in mammals like cows, which is not causing a lot of deaths necessarily, but it is causing issues with milk production and also with fatigue in those dairy cows. Where it's really having an impact, though, is in chickens and poultry and eggs. So if we look at the USDA website, they're actually updating this. And you can see here that there is activity in many states, especially on the coast, but there is a lot of activity here in Ohio, which as it turns out is the number two producer of eggs in the country, the number one being Iowa. And so far they've done pretty well. Now, if we break down all of these flocks that are being looked at into the commercial flocks, you can see again, Ohio is leading the pack. In California, we see that here. And in Iowa, they've really had some pretty good luck in terms of keeping their poultry farms out of H5N1's way. If we look at a different category, which is included, which is the backyard flocks. So this is just birds, basically. We see a lot of activity here in Idaho and some in Iowa and really not much in Ohio. But this is an issue that if we start to see it in Iowa, which has been seen recently for the first time here, that could spread to the number one producer of eggs in the country and cut that down. Realize that when you detect H5N1 in a farm, basically a lot of birds have to be culled to prevent that spread. So just to review again, we're talking about H5N1, and the question is, is, what are we seeing in terms of human H5N1? Almost exclusively since this outbreak occurred, there's been about 65 plus United States human cases. Most of them have been attributed to milking cattle. There have been a few very sick ones that seem to have been attributed to poultry, which is interesting because we're starting to see that the severe ones are associated with poultry transmission, but the common ones that we see with just conjunctivitis and colds are associated with the milking cattle. So there's been some precautions that have been implemented there on dairy farms to prevent that spread into humans. Despite this, though, there has been one death and we're told by the health authorities that this was in somebody who was over the age of 65. This patient died January 6th of 2025, and they got it from a backyard flock. So this seems to be something that you can catch not just from the farms, but it's also out there in the wild. So what's actually happening right now in terms of the United States preparedness for a potential pandemic? The key thing that I want you to understand is that there is currently no evidence whatsoever of human-to-human -human spread as yet. That would need to happen before you would have a pandemic, and so far we have not seen this. The concern, though, is that H5N1 is spreading, and it's becoming more prevalent, and we're seeing it in more and more animals across the states. And so there is a concern that if this continues, it could lead to a mutation that is beneficial for the virus to spread from the animals to humans, and then finally be able to infect the receptors that we see in the upper airway of humans to be able to transmit. We haven't seen that yet, but the more infections occur, the higher the chances of that happening. So what we have is basically three vaccines, H5N1 vaccines, that are against the older strains of the virus that we've seen in the past. And these are the more traditional vaccines. So this is not the mRNA vaccines, but the more traditional ones. Some of these involve eggs. Sometimes eggs are needed in the production of certain influenza vaccines. Some of the newer ones don't require eggs. That's going to be interesting because the price of eggs have gone up because of the culling of a lot of these poultry farms. They are hoping to have about 10 million vaccines by early spring that might work against a potential H5N1. But of course, in a country of 330 million people, 10 million may not be enough, although they may be targeting people who are around birds and cattle to see if that could head off that jump from the animal world into the human world in terms of H5N1 influenza. 
However, there's been some developments here in just the last month in terms of mRNA development of new vaccines for H5N1. And this was a news release that was put out just a few days before the inauguration on January 17, 2025, from Health and Human Services, titled HHS Provides $590 Million to Accelerate Pandemic Influenza MRNA-Based Vaccine Development, Enhance Platform Capability for Other Emerging Pandemic Viruses. And actually, here is the title, Other Emerging Infectious Disease. And you can see here it says that the U.S. Department Department of Health and Human Services will provide approximately $590 million to Moderna to accelerate the development of mRNA-based pandemic influenza vaccines and enhance mRNA platform capabilities so that the United States is better prepared to respond to other emerging infectious diseases. The award was made through the Rapid Response Partnership Vehicle Consortium with funding from the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, part of the HHS Administration for Strategic Preparedness and Response. This funding allows Moderna to accelerate development of an H5N1 mRNA influenza vaccine that is well matched to strains currently circulating in cows and birds and expands the clinical data supporting the use of mRNA vaccines that may be needed if other influenza strains emerge with pandemic potential. So it's unclear whether or not that direction is still going to be continued with the current administration. HHS still does not have yet, as this recording, a confirmed director. And the one that is currently the candidate has mentioned in the past that he was against the use of mRNA platforms for COVID-19. So it's unclear exactly where this is going to go. We at MedCram have talked in the past about the Swiss cheese model, where there are multiple slices of Swiss cheese, if you will, and each of them have holes in different places. Each slice of cheese is an intervention, and if you're trying to prevent something from getting through, you can see that each intervention is going to decrease the chances of having a bad outcome. And we believe that there are many different slices of cheese of which vaccines are just one. We've talked about other slices. We've talked about what to do with the flu. Check out these videos and we'll leave links to them. The effects of sunlight, which is very powerful, of N-acetylcysteine, which has a multi-center randomized placebo-controlled trial. We've talked about vaccines. If you want to check that out, please do. But one of the things that we also have talked about as well in terms of influenza and other viruses is the effect of fever. Maybe not treating low-grade fevers as often as we normally do because this actually enhances the innate immune system. We'll put a link to that video as well. Check us out at medcram.com where we have our new course that is up and running, pneumothorax and chest tubes explained clearly. Oftentimes when patients come in with the flu and they develop pneumonia, it can happen where there are pneumothoraces that occur on the ventilator. And in these situations, understanding about how to place a chest tube, where to place a chest tube, when to place a chest tube, and how to manage that chest tube is very important. And we do have CME credits up to 2.75 hours. So check us out on medcram.com. Subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications, leave us a comment. Thanks for joining us.